Yeah, so today I'm going to talk about partial differential equations which describes the motion of fluid. So one can imagine water. And in 1757, Euler derived the Euler equations based on mass conservation and momentum balance. Um, so in the equation, there are two unknown functions, u and p, where u represents the velocity of the fluid and p is pressure. And both functions are defined on some domain, which lies on three-dimensional equivalent space and some time interval, say, zero to p. So these are two unknown functions in the equation. And, um, and we further assume that the density of the fluid remains constant. So in other words, we focus on the incompressible fluid. Then by mass conservation, If you consider some arbitrary region with this boundary, the mass, amount of mass flowing out of the boundary should be same with uh, that of flowing inward. In other words, the net flow on the boundary should be zero. So here and uh, I did not end by the outward normal vector of unit normal vector of the region. And then applying the divergence theorem, we obtain the integral of divergence u on any arbitrary region equal to zero, which leads to the divergence free condition. The region is omega? Is it, is it the third region? Or is it uh, so this is arbitrary region. So arbitrary sub region of omega. So that we can get. Uh, And then if you consider the momentum balance, in other words, like Newton's second law f equals to ma, we can get the following uh, momentum equation. So here, uh, indeed, the fluid in general flows from the area of high pressure to area of low pressure. So in a direction of negative gradient p, we have force, and also these two, these first two terms describe the acceleration of a fluid particle. So if you imagine the fluid particle which lies at a point x at some time t, then in a very short time, uh, in very short time, the particle moves approximately to x plus u s t. And if you calculate the rate of change of uh, velocity between these two points, you can easily get the first two terms. So the system of these two equation is called the polar equation. And as a side note, the Navier-Stokes equation, which, uh, which maybe you are more familiar with from one of the millennia problems, additionally consider the effect of uh, the friction force arising in the adjacent layer of fluid. So, so in that sense, the Navier-Stokes equation better describes the real world fluid, and the extra force uh, can be described as nu times delta u on the right hand side of the momentum equation. And here, nu denotes the viscosity. Uh, as if nu is positive parameter for viscosity and it measures the friction. So for example, honey has a higher viscosity than water. So in this Navier-Stokes equation perspective, polar equation is a limit case when viscosity goes to zero. So this was the introduction to the equation. Now, uh, let's move to the energy conservation. So here, what I mean by energy is the total kinetic energy because there's no uh, external force and it is defined by one half of the square integral of velocity in a whole domain. And to see its change in time, just uh, in a product to uh, 
uh, which belongs into the momentary equation. Then, as long as u is differential, then time you get the following. Here, n is again upward in the vector of the domain. And then if we choose the domain as a purity domain, then we can turn off the uh, boundary effect. In other words, uh, we get the energy concentration. And now one can ask, uh, what if the velocity is uh, no longer differentiable? Is the energy conservation still valid? And if not, what would be the minimum regularity, uh, minimum differentiability of the velocity to guarantee the energy conservation? Uh, one can find uh, the answer to this question from uh, a conjecture proposed by physicist Onsager. So he asserts that the rough solution may fail to have the energy conservation. Uh, to be precise, he considered uh, alpha hole the continuous velocity. Uh, so here, alpha can be any number between zero and one, and roughly speaking, alpha hole the continuity corresponds to the alpha times differentiability. And more rigorously, it means that the following quantity has uniform bound in all variables. Then the Unsager uh, conjecture can be stated as follows if the velocity is alpha hold continuous for alpha greater than one third, we have the conservation. While if alpha is less than one third, the conservation may fail. In other words, for each alpha, one could construct from alpha with a continuous velocity whose total kinetic energy. Uh, so after this conjecture is proposed in 1994, Constantine E and DP proved the positive direction uh, mathematically. And the negative direction was proved by ESAP two years ago. And the proof of the negative direction is based on uh, relying on the convex integration scheme, which is first introduced to the older equation by Camillo and Cyclohini. And in fact, along the way, there are a series of partial regions. Okay, then how about when alpha equal to one third? Well, in that case, the question is still. Which is the velocity vector with which we are showing is alpha order. Is uh -huh. it proportional to P or to you? It's the same as you. It's you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, hold the regularity of P. Yeah, so before I move on, I would like to remark, give some remark on this uh, on Sager's conjecture. In fact, on Sager's motivation didn't arise from the mathematical question. Rather, he wanted to explain the phenomena called anomalous dissipation in Tabulan schools. Uh, let's consider the energy balance of the Navier-Stokes report. As we discussed before, for 
genetic energy of the number two free agent satisfies the following equality. And here, uh, for each viscosity nu, I think lost the corresponding solution by u nu. Uh, so compared to the old equation, uh, we have the initial term on the right hand side, which comes from the term reflecting the uh, friction. And as you see, it's always non positive. So one could say that the friction indeed leads to the kinetic energy of the But interestingly, uh, it is observed in uh, uh, observed experimentally and also numerically that if you send the viscosity to zero, the right hand side converges to some uh, strict negative number. So in other words, in managing this cost limit, uh, there's still remaining dissipation, uh, although the limit case, which is the older equation, has energy conservation for small solution. And uh, this anomalous, this uh, Onsaga explained this anomalous dissipation by proposing some uh, energy state to frequent frequency infinity, which it could happen independent of the viscosity. So he concludes that uh, this such dissipation could even happen to older equations. Okay, so now let's go back to the negative direction of uh, Zagar's conjecture. In fact, if you see the proof, we, uh, we can construct infinitely many solutions. And one could ask, are they all physically reasonable or acceptable? Well, uh, for the older equation, uh, as far as I know, we haven't had the agreed characterization for the physically reasonable solution. Uh, but as you may guess from the uh, previous discussion, we at least expect a physically reasonable older flow uh, to be recovered as uh, this vanishing viscose limit of Navier's flows flows. And in this direction, Yuchan and Robert proved that uh, if older flows can be recovered from uh, vanishing viscose limit of suitable with solution to the Navier Stokes equation in L3 topology, strongly in L3 topology, that such solution should obey the local energy inequality. And this motivates us to consider stronger versions of Onsager's conjecture. So, namely, it is Onsager's conjecture with additional requirement solution that the local uh, energy. To introduce it, this inequality, let's recall the energy balance again. But now in a local uh, any sub region. And uh, we still keep the boundary uh, integral. So this is called the smooth solution and local energy inequality prevents the creation of extra kinetic energy which exceeds the uh, energy flux through the boundary. So there is a inequality. So for the negative direction of strong, uh, stronger version of the Onsager conjecture, um, recently Camillo and I obtained some harder results for alpha less than one over seven. And I'm aiming to improve it to the conjecture uh, threshold for answer. This is end of my talk. Thank you very much for your attention. How do you define the Euler equation for okay. not very regular U? How do I define? To, what, in what the distribution of whatever sense is the Euler equation to be understood? For ah, okay, okay. Energy. So in what sense the solution solves the whole equation? Yes. Yeah. So it, it solves in distribution sense. Mm -hmm. But you have some products. So <laughs> in the equation, there are some products. Yes, so yes. Uh, for example, like, so 
it can be so I mean, against your words about yes. center, mm -hmm. but if you pretend it's smooth, but you, since we have diverse speed condition, it can be written as as follows. So as long as you have a square inter I mean square, square integrability of the solution, mm -hmm. it's okay. okay. Uh, so the the way to go from the that you want to go from the one over seven to the one third is it related? Is it like uh, taking the the last local uh, inequality and and controlling better the the elbow cell? Is it like it, it's the, so? What can you say something about this elbow cell? What is some intuition? What what's What's the problem? So, uh, so I guess you are asking what's the difficulty to improve uh, to the one third? I guess even more than that, just to, to feel a bit what what what's the what is this uh, this problem the which is probably what's preventing the local to become global. Um, so here, what well, compared to the outside conjecture, we have additional uh, requirement. So, um, so for example, when you construct the uh, solution, it you also need to care about the additional inequality. And of course, what well, so the outsider conjecture is solved by uh, convex integration scheme, and they also apply some gluing technique. But um, I'm sure you're aware of the results. But in there, for example, I mean there are actually many technical issues. But for example, they they have some spiegeling cutoff, but that sort of creates some extra uh, kinetic energy. So it sort of come. It makes some confliction uh, with this local energy inequality. So that's uh, part of the obstruction. But yeah, but there are also other technical issues. How come so? Is there exponent the, the, the older exponent evolve over time? Uh, old exponent. Do you know that? You mean the so wait, how conditions that satisfy that? Given alpha, uh -huh. is, does it for a time after that? Does it still satisfy alpha? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. I should construct some solution. Uh, yeah, so, we can actually cool. construct solution in the following. Well, after any finite time, like it is still in the alpha space. Is that your question? But but it's not a correlation of the of the regularity of the initial data. Right. So those particular solutions have the property that you're saying. So they're they like keeping the same as the exponent. Uh, but it's not true for any solution. So there are solutions which actually deteriorate the deteriorate. If that is the question, right? So it's not like a regularity which is propagated from the from the initial point. Are the solutions that become more regular over time? Or no, no, they cannot become more regular. Well, Navier Stokes can become, I mean, Navier Stokes regularizes the classical solution. Euler, if you have a C1 solution, we keep it kind of C1 and, and for some time. And then, of course, you might wonder whether there is the blow up, and that is like, you know, famous open problem. But further solutions are below, like, the kind of, you know, propagation of regularity that you would have uh, from Euler. So there are, there are examples in the literature even before these ones, which show you, I don't know, C1 half uh, solution, which becomes worse in, 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 in later times. Okay, so if there are no other questions, uh, thanks, thank you.